week on the Analog Circle Podcast. We get some pretty exciting news about Xbox's next exclusive, Avowed. More news has come out about the next Doom installment, and the premise of the game sounds pretty good. I'm really looking forward to this one. The next Xbox, oh my gosh, this thing sounds very, very different than any of the previous Xboxes. It looks like Microsoft is going down a different path, but we will definitely discuss. And new features have been revealed for the upcoming game, Black Myth Wukong. That was one of the first games I... uh, Anyway, we will discuss what all of these stories can be found here and more in episode 211 of the Analog Circle Podcast. I am your host, Keon Mitchell, and welcome to the show. Welcome. As always, it is fantastic to have you guys here, and I greatly greatly appreciate it now guys before we finally get into the game and news and all of that good stuff before we get this episode started if you do want to be a part of listener feedback and this week ah it's gonna be late shout out to you cody clark i got you my good brother but it is definitely gonna be late this week because i'm recording this on monday at Five o'clock. It just turned five o'clock in the afternoon. But if you do want to be a part of that episode, you can do it two different ways. You can either call in at 443-380-0281 and let your voice be heard. Or you can email the show. And the email address is simply the analog circle podcast at gmail.com. So without further ado, guys, I do believe it is time to get into what we all come here for. And that is the gaming news that went down. Let's go ahead and let's get things started with the story that I actually got from Insider Gaming. So let's talk about uh, this was actually a game that was shown quite a bit before the generation, but it showed us what next generation graphics could be now i mentioned it in the introduction but i'm talking about black myth wukong this game when i first saw it for the first time this was quite a few years ago that game looks stellar so we got some news on this so we have a new report uh coming from leaker lunatic ingus he spells, well, Ingnus, he spells his last name I-G-N-U-S, who says the game will feature, quote, around 160 enemy types, end of quote, and, quote, 80 plus bosses. God darn, how big is this game? 80 plus bosses, end of quote. Now, they go on to say the game will feature a new game plus mode at launch and will also feature multiple endings i guess that's why you got so many bosses uh now it was also said that quote the game is slightly easier than souls born games end of quote which was excellent for me i heard that i said great like i was stuck going on a cornflakes commercial nah that's fantastic frosted flakes by the way but uh anyway um But as always, you know, like I tell you guys in all of these different episodes, take all of this stuff with a mustard seed of truth until we get the final word from the actual developer of uh, Wukong, uh, well, Black Myth Wukong. This is definitely a game I'm looking forward to. Once I had heard that that this game was going to have the difficulty of a, a Bloodborne or Souls and all of that stuff, I said, oh, heck no. As beautiful as this game looks, as interested as I am in this game, if it plays anything like those, I am not signing up for that. Because you guys know my motto, I play games for fun. I don't play them to bump my head against the wall and get all upset. I'm not playing it for the challenge. I want to have fun with the games that I play. And then when you throw in some crazy difficulty level of experience level that you need, hey, you can keep that. That is not a fun game to me. I experienced that back in the 80s. 
and a little bit in the 90s when games were just super duper hard. Have you ever played the original Ninja Gaiden on the the original Nintendo, the NES? Oh, shucks, yeah. I don't need that in my life right now, man. I'm 45 years old. I'm trying to play games to have fun, not for the challenge. I want to have a good time. But anyway, we'll see what happens with this. Hopefully, if this information is true, we'll get some more of it, probably at Jeff Keighley's, you know, Summer Games Fest, you know, to uh, give us some more confirmation on this. But until then... Take this story with the mustard seed of truth. Let's go ahead and let's get into the next story that I actually got from GameSpot. Now, shout out to Ninja Theory for their release of Sinua Saga. And we got some news on that a little later on. But also leading up to the closures of several Xbox studios, words started to circle you know, about the possibility of Ninja Theory shutting down if their game didn't perform. <sighs> We want to talk about that. Oh, man. Now, it seems as though we may be able to rest easy because according to a report from Windows Central, the studio's new game has already been green lit. And it's not Project Mora, which was shown back in 2021. So this is something entirely different. So I'm happy that they are getting the green light. But if I'm not mistaken, now this is Ninja Theory. This talent level that these guys have is immense. It is incredible. Their track record in my opinion, they have not missed. Now granted, I will Say this, I never finished the original Hellblade. I, those, those looking puzzles, nah, yeah, that was a little bit of a, yeah, that wasn't one of their strong suits. If, if you ask me outside of Hellblade, and that game was still good from what I played, but I don't like puzzlers at all. Any game that has puzzles in it and all of that stuff, I'm really not a fan, you know, so that was a bit of a, a X a red X on them as far as I was concerned when it came to Hellblade, but it still wasn't enough to be a uh, shucks. I guess it was a deal breaker. I ain't been back to the game since, you know, so I guess maybe that may be a bit of an X on their resume, but everything else up to that point, you know, the Ninja Theory had been behind. I had been, oh, and I, everybody forgets, we all forget that one game that seems like it got it got swept under the rug. It was that Overwatch uh clone. What was it? A uh, bleeding bleeding edge. Oh my gosh. Boo this man. I don't know why Microsoft let these guys make that. Now that's a big X on their resume. And, and of course, I'm a little biased as well. I'm not really into the multiplayer game. So that was a no-go from the gate for me. So maybe Hellblade 1 and, you know, um, Bleeding, <laughs> ha, man, Bleeding Edge. You know, that might not have been, you know, some of their shining points, as it were. But I still do believe that uh, Hellblade, you know, the franchise, I do believe it is a good game. I'm going to tell y'all. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see what this price tag is going to be for the um, Xbox uh, Series X. I'm wondering if they're going to do a price drop at the show, at the Xbox show. If that thing drops in price, man, I'm going to tell you something, man. I might have to dive on it because I am, I'm sitting here and I'm fiending a little bit. And I and I, I, I will admit this. I, I, I'm feeding God to the play. Uh, Sinua Saga, man. I saw that game sort of breakdown of a uh, digital foundry talking about this is some of the best graphics we've ever had in a game. And they were doing like 10 times close up on a face. You can see the rain dripping off of. I was like, God, hey, I, I want to play this. I want to experience it. But that Xbox price, it has to be at a certain price range where I feel like it's worth it. So, you know, stay tuned. They definitely, a semi have me on the hook to want to get a Series X. But, um, yeah, they, 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 they got to do a little bit more. You know, if they can drop that price, 
then we may be able to talk. But we'll see. Maybe at the um showcase we'll get some news on that. Uh who knows? But uh anyway, let's go ahead though, guys, and let's get into and again, congratulations to Ninja Theory for getting this green light. But uh, let's get on into the next story, which I actually got from GameSpot. Now, for those of you that are interested, Activision will be offering a free trial for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, where Modern Warfare 3, from May 30th to June 3rd. Now, you will have access to both multiplayer and zombies mode. And it looks like the reason for the free trial is to expose as many game players as possible to the new season. So they're trying to get guys in, trying to, you know, make it so you guys want to get out there, prestige, spend a little bit of money, you know, get on with the game and, uh, you know, have a good time. Now, this is the thing. I actually have more questions about this because, I mean, I think this is cool. This is good for some people that are definitely into online, you know, gaming, Call of Duty, you know, this is a really good incentive. You get to have this free trial from May 30th to June 3rd. So what's that, uh, three, maybe four days? I forget how many days we have in this month. Let me see some. Hold on. Let's see. It's right here. I got my calendar right here. Uh, okay, we got 31 days. So, yeah, you get four days. Four days to try this out, to get the access. Um, I think this is great, but the bigger question that I have now – I've been seeing reports. Now, I don't know how true it is. Matter of fact, so I'm not telling y'all false information. I want to just look this up for myself really quickly. That way we can we can share in this together because I'm not 100% sure if they're going to be um, releasing Call of Duty this generation. I mean, not this generation, but last generation. So hold on. Let me see something. Will Call of Duty... Black Ops 6 release on last gen hardware. According to VG Charts, Insider Gaming spoke with multiple sources that claim Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will not only launch for current generation consoles, but also on last generation consoles, the PlayStation oh, 4 and Xbox One. Shucks! Fool this man! No! What are we doing? We are in year four, year four. Now, the play that I thought was going to happen, because I was sitting here and I was thinking, look, if Xbox actually gets the marketing, well, they have the marketing, they own the darn IP. If they put that on the front of an Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X, the new Call of Duty included in their service, inside of Game Pass, day and date, I thought they could have done some damage. And the reason why I thought they would have been able to do some damage is because, look, the Series S is much cheaper, even though it's not nearly as powerful as the uh, PlayStation 5, but it is a much cheaper uh, option for those guys that are casuals that just want to play Call of Duty. So I thought the play that they were going to have in their back back pocket was this new Call of Duty was going to be exclusive to this current generation hardware and for people that were not that didn't want to move over just yet they were they they would have an incentive to move over to this generation of hardware because they would want to play call of duty now that this report is coming out that it's still going to be available on last gen these guys ain't moving they ain't going nowhere The casual Call of Duty player, that joker is stuck. I truly thought that Microsoft was going to take advantage of this. And I understand it's still way more players on last generation hardware than it is this generation hardware. Matter of fact, God dog, I guess this is a, a preview of the question of the week because I know exactly what I'll be asking y'all at the end of the show. Y'all already see it though, but, uh, we'll discuss that a little later. But um, this seems like, wow, this was a golden opportunity for them to be able to take advantage of it. But instead, they're still, God, dog, man, I'm going to tell you all something. I miss the days when new console hardware came out. They said, darn all of that other old hardware. We're moving on. 
If you want to play these new games, you got to get the new console. That's the only way you're going to rock out with all of this stuff that we have that's coming out from this point forward. If you want to be a part of it, pick up the new generation hardware. The next or current generation hardware. You can't rock Super Mario World on the doggone original Nintendo. You got to get a Super Nintendo. And I'm going to tell you, to a certain degree, I think that is also hurting gaming to a certain extent. They are really dragging this generation. Now, we're in year four. Do y'all realize between the next two Maybe three years tops. I mean, even Xbox, if it's true, if it's to be believed, they're going to be leaving this generation in 2026, which is two years from now. So two to three years from now, we will be in the next generation, and they're still holding on four years later. This is absolutely ridiculous. That's why I applaud. I applaud Rockstar. Rockstar is going to be the one. That's going to be the game that's going to make people have to cross over to this current generation of hardware. So in my mind, at first I thought Call of Duty was going to do it for Xbox and being on the box. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to move some units, you know, um, having it in the service. I'm sure they will definitely get some sales. I think, again, like I said the last time, I think I would be very naive to believe that Call of Duty, the latest Call of Duty, being on the box and being told that it is included, that's if they do it that way, that it's included with the purchase of the console. Ah, I mean, that's, 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 it would have been a much better sale if it was only available on current gen hardware. So, I mean, got that working against you, that hurdle to jump over, but even still, it will be some people that will come over. I don't think it'll be as big as a migration, but when Grand Theft Auto comes out, that's going to be it. So whoever gets the marketing rights to that game, that game is going to sell your box. I mean, PlayStation 5, they already said they're behind, understandably so. They keep on doggone, oh, man. They just keep on keeping these last generation consoles a lot. They are, they are doggone holding us back with this BS. The next Call of Duty could probably be much better than it's going to turn out being. But you know what? I digress. I've spent enough time on this. I'm trying to get y'all out of here in an hour. We'll see about that. But um, anyway, I think it was just an opportunity that was lost for not putting Call of Duty on current generation hardware. They had three previous Call of Duties to get this together. And I can almost guarantee it feels like next year is going to be the same thing. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. But let's go ahead, guys, and let's get into the next story that I actually got from Push Square. So this next story is the smallest, most minute update But the MVP, in my opinion, the big brother of PlayStation Studios, you know, Insomniac Games, has come out to tell us something about their upcoming game, Marvel's Wolverine, where they replied to someone on X asking when the game would be revealed. Now, Insomniac responded by saying, quote, we'll share news when the time is right. And right, we say the time is right. And the right time isn't now. End of quote. So we have nothing, nothing as it stands right now. But again, they said they will reveal it when the time is right. Now, it's been some talks, you know, about this show. We got a little bit of news on that a little later on. That we'll try to put the two together. So uh, right now, again, nothing to really report on. Insomniac, I'm sure, still very, very busy in the trenches with Wolverine trying to get that together. But as it stands right now, nothing to report. But when that time, when the time is right and the moon sets at a third degree angle in the middle of the week, 
That's when we're going to get a doggone announcement about Wolverine. But we shall see what happens with this in the upcoming, hopefully, weeks, if not months. Because this next story is a little... It's a little alarming, but uh, we'll get to it when we get there. But let's get on into the next story that I actually got from GameSpot. Now, let's get into some rumors. Rumor has it there's something that only I know. So according to Deal Apps, one of my favorite developers, Team Asobi, God, I got to give it up for God, dog, Team Asobi. These guys are amazing at what they do. Oh my gosh. All right, so here we go. So Team Asobi is working on a new Astrobot game titled, well, it's titled Astrobot. Now, the game also introduces uh new characters. One in particular is a a phonetic uh a, a phonetic in the form of a robot. Now, the game will also be a PlayStation 5 exclusive and will not be showing up on PSVR 2. We understand why. PSVR 2 is unfortunately dead out here right now. It's not moving units or anything. It was some word out there saying that the price point may get dropped and maybe we'll hear something about that at one of their upcoming shows But as it stands right now, yeah, that thing is not making any noise. And it's actually, from what I understand, it's a great piece of tech, but it's just very, very expensive. But with this um, Astrobot, you don't have to worry about it being uh, on the um, PlayStation VR 2 like it was on the PSVR 1. Now, the biggest takeaway to this story is this game, according to the reports, will be revealed within the next 15 days which could mean it could show up at playstation showcase now again i don't want to get into it at the moment but this showcase ah man i i don't know about this brothers may is pretty much out of here we are on may 27th 2024 may 27th and we have heard nothing it is monday i looked through the news nothing to report so i don't know what's gonna happen with this but we'll see within the next 15 days so if i wrote this down let's say i wrote this down uh last i think i found this story let's say around like last thursday so last thursday so let's try to get a timeline going here last thursday was the 23rd So you figure today is the 27th. So he's talking about 15 days from the 23rd. So the 23rd, uh, then you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So he's saying by June 7th, we should have something or know something about this game. If the reports are to be believed. So it looks like God darn will shoot. If that's the case, now hold on. Now this is logically correct. If you know, it's to be believed because that is the day that Jeff Keeley. Hold on, man. You know what brothers? Hold on. Who, who is this guy again? Hold on, man. This guy's name is deal abs. It's spelled D E A L A B S. I don't know, brother. This this guy said within the next 15 days, this dude set it up to make it fall con- conveniently on the day the doggone Jeff Keeley is having his summer game fest. I think this brother might be just 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 out here guessing, like all of us. I, Cause I, I'm, I'm beyond with man. I don't know this brother's track record. I don't know what this brother's been able to uh, come up with in the past. I saw this story. I was like, oh, that sounds good. And now I'm realizing in real time, I don't know if this dude is even even on point with this. Because if, I mean, if you think about it, if Sony is not going to have a show, if they're not having a showcase, they're not showing off any of their games, then the second best thing they could do in order to have a presence in the E3 season is to at least show up the Jeff Keighley show. And we know that they showed up in a pretty big way last year when they showed off Spider-Man two 
at Jeff Keighley's show, so they don't have a problem, you know, from that standpoint of dropping a bomb on Jeff Keighley's show because I thought they would have saved that for themselves, but they didn't. Excuse me, and with um, Astrobot being a smaller title, I mean, me, I'm a huge fan of the Joker. I think he's, I think the, the Astrobot um, franchise is amazing. Team Asobi, if you ever want them to show off what your hardware can do as far as like the um the controller or the different features. Nobody to this day has done it better than them in any game that I've played on PlayStation 5. They have did it to perfection. So if they were to show off their game, you know, that being of a smaller caliber game and not being a Wolverine or you know, um, the next game that Naughty Dog is working on, but it being a smaller caliber game, I feel like that could show up at that show and we could get some more information on it. Um, but again, all of this is speculation. This brother made it conveniently fall on the last day of the 15 day cycle, fall on Jeff Keeley's dog on a uh, summer games fest. I don't know, my Aunt Tan is, you know, you know, they went up a little bit with this one, you know, just re-visiting um, this story. But we'll see what happens with it. Either way, I'm a big fan of um, Astrobot. I'm actually looking at them right now on my PlayStation VR 1 that I never opened up, where it was that game, Astrobot and Moss. They were both, you know, it was a twofer uh, for a Black Friday deal, and I never even opened the Joker up. All right, darn, but we'll see, man. Let's go ahead, though, guys, and let's get into the next story that I actually got from Kutaku. Now, according to a new report, the plot, oh, it thickens when it comes to a new Doom game being announced this year because on May 24th, Insider Gaming reported that the next Doom project has been planned to be revealed at no other than the Xbox Showcase on June 9th. Oh, man. Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, sir. I'm looking forward to that. Now, not only that, but the alleged title of the game has been revealed as well. Now, it's being called Doom the Dark Ages, suggesting that this game could be a prequel and that actually falls in line with the code name of this early on, which was called, quote, Year Zero, end of quote, meaning that, look, this is the beginning of the beginning. If the code name, well, the, that was the code name, but if the code name and the actual title of the game uh, is what it is, then they line up perfectly with each other. But um, according to an update updated story, from Nate the Hate. Now, this guy, he does have a track record. This guy's pretty good. Um, the game will be releasing. Oh, shucks. I forgot about this detail. The next Doom game will be releasing on PlayStation 5 at the same time that it's being released on the Xbox Series X and S. I'm not even going to boo that, even though. Wow, that seems like another golden opportunity out of Xbox's hands. Now, I'm not saying Doom is one of those games that is going to shift a player base over to one side versus the other. But Doom is a highly respected franchise. And if you have that as a first party title, I would think that you would want to dangle that just a little bit in front of people to let them know that this is on our console. This is our game. We own it now. You can only get it on our box. But no, this isn't the game that Xbox is playing right now as it stands. Now, until they actually come out and confirm this, whether it's Sarah Bond, whether it's Phil Spencer, Matt Booty, whoever. I mean, take it with a mustard seed of truth that it's going to happen with the PlayStation 5 day and date as the Xbox version. But if this is to be believed, again, I guess what the play will be is play it 
in Game Pass on day one. That seems like that's going to be their, um, <laughs> shucks. That seems like that's going to be their strategy, but that has not worked thus far. It hasn't worked. It hasn't. Everybody's saying, oh man, having all of these games on, on, on Game Pass is going to shift all the momentum. It has done nothing thus far. And all of your big titles, you're still giving it to the competition. And I understand some people would say that Doom has always been a multi-plat. And you would be absolutely right. But you own it now. So you can do what you want to do with it. You're not, you're not anchored to have to look out for the competition. You can do what you want to do. But I also understand that as a corporation, Microsoft is also trying to get the dog on bag. Santi and the dollar, we already know his play. He don't give a dog on where the game is. The game could be in a console and out of space. He don't give a darn. He just wants to make sure that he can get that person to play the game, to pay for Game Pass, or to outright buy the game. Because on PlayStation, you guys, including myself, are going to be playing, paying full boat for this game versus somebody who has a Xbox Series X or S. They can actually get it inside of Game Pass for what's Game Pass? $17 a month, somewhere around there, which is still a good deal, but Darn, I'm just looking at their track record. It has not helped them yet. And again, just going back for a second to a previous conversation, them not having Call of Duty exclusive to this generation, that's just going to, if they're trying to move units, which it doesn't seem like they are, but if Xbox is trying to move units, it would have been a good idea for them to make that strictly on current generation. But I digress. So we'll see about Doom, though. Either way, I'm very excited about this game. I've been a Doom fan since I dug the PC, the PC version of Doom, running it through, what was that, DOS, MS-DOS, I believe you had to run it through back in the day. Uh, It was great, man. It's been really good. I fell off of it for a couple of years, picked it back up on the uh, latest Doom uh, that released. I got the other Doom. Didn't play anyway. That don't matter. Uh, anyway, we'll see what happens with this. I'm getting long winded with this story. We're gonna go ahead though, and I'm looking forward to seeing this at their show. Now, hopefully, doggone, I'm really hoping that this is current generation only. That you can't get it on last generation hardware. That has not been confirmed thus far. But that's what I am hoping for. But we will see. Let's get into the next story that I actually got from Game Rant. So, like always, like I always say, rumors are rumors until it's proven to be true. So, I just want to put that caveat out there before we get into this next story. But uh, according to a known leaker, it's claimed that the next-gen Xbox is being envisioned as a reference device for other manufacturers to use. Now, elaborating on this point, the leaker also states that the upcoming system will, quote, most likely, end of quote, serve as a reference for companies, (laughs) excuse me, for companies, making products in the vein of the Asus ROG Ally, uh, implying that the device will be a handheld console. So in so many words, they will have a OEM when it comes to this. And the first thing that I thought of was, wait a minute. So is Microsoft just going to, because see, I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all, and I hope y'all can write in to actually give me a little bit more background on this hold on as a matter of fact just to figure out what a oem is because I, I i don't darn know i'm gonna look it up right now what is a oem according to wikipedia an original equipment manufacturer is generally perceived as a company that produces parts and equipment that may be marketed by another manufacturer man get the frick what so hold on are they are they going to allow that? Now, now, trust me, I'm, I know I'm going to be off on this one. So I'm going to need y'all help Write in, call in, you know, to let me know if I'm, if I totally butchered 
the, the perspective on this one or if I got it right. Somebody let me know. But does that mean, because when I hear that, the first thing that I think of is, and this was back in the day, the 3DO. I remember at one point in time, it was Panasonic that made the 3DO. And then at one point in time, I, I looked up another time and I saw Gold Star was actually producing the 3DO. So I was like, what the frick? What, what, you know, what, 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 what is this? What happened? How, how the world was it? Panasonic and then Gold Star actually developed this. So my thinking, or at least the way I'm processing this, and it, it could definitely be completely off base. But are they saying that these guys are going to be able to make their own console pretty much based off of what the specs are going to be? Kind of like, I guess, like um, Nico and them back in the day. What was it? Nico? Nico? I forgot the, 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 um, the controller manufacturer, but they could actually make controllers for the console, but they weren't um, the actual original cons. I mean, uh, um controllers for the console like third party manufacturers could actually put their stuff onto the um the original console and sell it is it going to be something like that put on the grander scale of them actually being able to make the hardware itself and they just go to you know x well not xbox but microsoft and say hey we got an idea can we make the box like this and put our spin on it what the world is that what is that? I mean, that, that that's the way um, I'm processing it. I'm not saying it's, I'm right, but that's how I feel. I can only go off of what I think at the moment. Like I said, you guys write in, let me know, you know what it is. But if that is the case, that they're pretty much going to put a, man, shoot, a, a doggone prototype out there and say, look, these are the specs that we're working with. If this is something that you want to do, this is our, um, our specs and this is what you need to you know uh manufacture in order for us to give you the green light and boom at that point in time xbox is not xbox xbox is just a name but it doesn't have the soul it doesn't have the the actual engineering itself from actual xbox if you're going to allow third party manufacturers to come in and make these things, I don't like that. If that's the case, Xbox, get the frick out the game, man. Just, 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 just get the heck up out of there because it is no way, man, I'm not going to trust this. It's like getting off, man. It's like those controllers. Look, listen, man, I, 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 I'm not knocking any, any brothers or sisters, that have gone out there and got some knockoff controllers. I, I, I'm not knocking you because look, man, you got to get what you can get. Hey, man, some man, it'd be rough out here. Money is tight and short. So I get it. But for me, I have never, it's been very, very rare. I did it one time with a Dreamcast controller and I forgot who the manufacturer was, but that controller broke on me. I said, oh, never again. I was about 19, maybe 20 at the time. I said, nah, I ain't doing that again. So I've always made it a point that if I'm going to get the controller, I'm going to get the actual licensed controller from the real manufacturer because I just had a bad experience um, with it in the past. So, yeah, if you're telling me that they're going to do that, have that kind of um approach, to the next Xbox, nah, y'all can definitely keep that. I, I would, but I would love to get you guys' opinion on this. If that is the case, and again, write in and let me know if I'm right or wrong. But if that's the case, that they're gonna pretty much outsource the next Xbox and be hands off and not really be involved, but give them, I guess, a bar of what they need to meet in order to get the green light to sell it then would you even want an Xbox at that point? I know I darn sure wouldn't. Not at all. It just wouldn't be appealing to me. And like I said, at that point in time, if that's what the plan is, and I could be completely off base in my understanding of this, but if that's the case, get out the game. Just give it up. 
sell your services on TV, sell your services on uh, tablets, phones, or whatever the case may be. But this, now nah, I can't rock with this, man. But um, I'm sure we'll get more information on this as the weeks and months go by. Again, the show is coming up June 9th. I can't wait for it. I'm still excited. Very, very shaky on a lot of stuff that's going on over at Xbox. I mean, I'm past shaky, man. It's a darn earthquake out here. I don't trust these jokers. I don't know what they're doing. You're telling me that you're doing like OEMs and having other people come in to possibly manufacture your consoles for you. I, I, I don't know about this spit. I don't know about this, man, but we will see. But anyway, we're going to move on from this into another Xbox story that I actually got from Forbes. I can't believe that they would do something like that, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, let, let's move on. So this story I got is from Forbes. So, um, yeah, for five years, a lot of us have waited for the highly anticipated Sinua Saga, or as some call it, Hellblade 2. Now, according to early reports and metrics, and this this goes back to people being a little wary about Ninja Theory being able to survive because of the engagement on their game. We all know that Sinua Saga is a niche game. It's not one of those blockbuster games that people are going to be clamoring for. It's not a Spider-Man. It's not a Grand Theft Auto. It's just, it just doesn't have that kind of name. So as a result, people are a little leery and weary about what would happen with them. So as it stands right now, we actually have the first metrics um, of the game, and it's coming from uh, the Xbox Top 50 Most Played Games list which is updated, this thing is updated every few days. Now, as it stands, the game is ranked 23rd place. It's ranked 23rd. Now, that's that's, that's kind of rough. A highly anticipated game that got shown off in 2019. This thing is running on Unreal Engine 5, has cutting-edge technology, uh, allegedly supposed to be a flagship title of the Xbox brand. And this game comes out and is ranked at 23rd. It didn't even make the top 20, let alone the top 10, 23rd. So the second metric is Steam numbers that show that the game peaked at 3,982. And putting this into perspective, now this is where whew, a red, a whole red flag actually comes out because that three thousand. Remember, it, it peaked at three thousand nine hundred and eighty-two, and um, yeah, like I said, putting it into perspective, Redfall when it released peaked at six thousand one hundred and twenty-four players. Now, granted. None of those numbers are good at all. Neither one of those are anything to write home about. I mean, ah, right, dog, 6,6100 players playing your game. Ah, right, darn, that is, oh, that is, that is, that ain't even, uh, you ain't even go wood with that one. God right, darn, you went paper, paper, dog on it, let alone going platinum. That joke went paper. Oh my gosh, man, at those kind of numbers, so, when you look at that and then you see Sinua Saga at 3,982, God darn, I don't care who you are. That's got to be alarming, especially for me being a huge Ninja Theory fan. Now, I'm not trying to come out here and do all of that doom and gloom. I'm not. I'm just reporting what, you know, what it is at the moment. Now, again, just to, you know, put a little bit of sunshine on this, this list is updated every couple days. Now, I believe I got this story actually earlier today. So, uh, yeah, this this is kind of recent. But um, who knows? In the next couple days, maybe the numbers go up. But right now, 3,982? I ain't even break four grand, brother. God, dog. It just shows that this game. Now, now this is the thing. What is the metric? What are they basing 
a game being a success off of because obviously we can't go off of what they said about how far rush that didn't end up being true because they got shut down. So it's obviously more to it, but I'm not saying that um, Ninja Theory is going to get shut down over this. I think it would be very, very unfair for them to do that because if I'm not mistaken, um, I'm not going to remember verbatim what was said, but they had a couple of hiccups in between the, the production of this game, switching engines, um, not being very proficient or having to learn how to work with Unreal Engine 5. It wasn't quite up and running to the to the level that they really needed it to, so that took them time to get that together. Um, but overall, the thing that I heard was they had, when it all came down to it, they had less development time on Hellblade 2 versus Hellblade 1, which hence some of the features and things that people saw that said it was a it was a setback, you know, with the second one versus the first one. It's a possibility that because of them having a shorter development time, you know, when they actually hit the ground running, uh, some of those things just had to be cut. Because even when they showed off the Sinua Saga trailer back in 2019, they hadn't even started working on the game yet. And then after that, 2020, uh, COVID hit and things got shut down for a while. So they had that to um, deal with as well. So they hit a couple of snags here. Now, am I making up excuses for them? Man, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Move this man. Oh, man. Maybe I am making up some excuses for but I'm biased. I, I tell y'all this. It's ninja theory. I'm biased, doggone. It shucks. You know, they, they, they were up against the wall, man. They, they had the tools that they needed. They was, they was under pressure, man. You know, so I'm just saying that I think that under different circumstances, they, they may have done a little bit better. But as it stands right now, look, man, it is what it is. Y'all released the game. Xbox gave y'all the green light to release it. Hey, it, it ain't no defending it, you know, when it comes down to it. The game is what it is. A lot of people are not liking it. Some people are liking it. As I checked, haven't checked Metacritic in a, in a couple of days, but like I said, it was at an 81. Who knows where it's at? Now, now I'm curious. Now I'm about to look it up. God darn it. Let me see. What's the Metacritic score for Hellblade 2? Let me see. All right, all right. I'm pulling it up now. Let's see if it held on. It did. It held on. It held on to an 81, and it's actually at a 75 for user score. So it has quite a few points less. But it still held on with that 81. Uh, the game is what it is. Um, these numbers, unfortunately, are what they are. You know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they didn't have any advertisement. They didn't really do much for the game to help it out. Uh, Xbox, you know, as it were, their, their um team putting it up on Twitter every day. That was cool. Having something different leading up to the game, but you, you do need that. You know, you need that budget to actually get out there and really get this game in front of more people's eyes, but maybe it wasn't one of those games that Xbox wanted to get behind fully because they knew that it wasn't one of those, that it wasn't going to be one of those games that were going to hit for everybody. But that's just unfortunate, man. So we'll see what happens. God, Dog, anytime you're doing worse than Redfall, that's that's got to be a blow, man. Shucks. But we'll see, man. We'll keep a lot, keep our eye on Ninja Theory and see what happens with those guys in the upcoming months and years. Uh, hopefully everything will be good and they will not be touched because I do believe at least give them one more chance. Give them one more shot. To, to show you what they have. Now, somebody, some people could say they 0 for 2 right now, you know, because we can't forget Bleeding Edge, and I'm with y'all on that. Yeah, you could have kept that Ninja Theory. But um, Hellblade 2 is not hitting like um a lot of people were hoping it was going to. So some people could say they're 0 for 2 right now underneath Xbox's banner, which doesn't that show you something, though? They get up under them, and all of a sudden, they starting to make 
I, I'm not going to call um, Senua Saga a dud. I'm not going to go nearly that far, but he slipped off a little bit. But that seems like the Xbox effect. Once you get up underneath them, things just start happening, man. But anyway, look, I'm trying to get y'all out of here in this next 10 minutes. We're going to try to speed through these next couple of stories. So the next story I have is coming from WCCF Tech. So this month we had heard Sony. (laughs) Excuse me. Next time I mute my mic, but, um, we heard Sony was supposed to be having his showcase uh, this month. Well, it looks like that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it don't look like that's going to happen. And instead, uh, they're saying that the show will be a state of play event. Now, I mean, I'm I'm cool with a state of play event. If it happens, I mean, that's fine. But I'm starting to get weary that that's not even going to happen. But um, as far as the showcase is concerned. This guy's name is Lunatic In- Ingnus. He spells his last name I G N U S. Um, he was actually the person that revealed a new Black Myth Wukong trailer. Um, would be shown um before it was actually shown. But he's the one that is saying that the PlayStation Showcase will happen in September. Now I don't I I don't know about this. You know um. I don't know about this being the case, but they have done this before. Um, but ah, oh man, I don't know. Take this report with a mustard seed of truth. I can see them doing that September, but again, again, and, and I'm not, I'm not picking on these guys, man. I'm really not. But sometimes, like I say, when I write these stories, I'm writing them down. I'm excited. You know, when I'm, when I'm getting them and sometimes I don't always think it all the way through. But even for this, for this brother, uh, who's called Lunatic Ingnis, uh, it, it seems like he's even possibly guessing at this saying, well, hey, look, that, that, that big show that they had with Wolverine, that happened in September. Once the E3 season was over, that was where it landed in September. So in my mind, I'm starting to say or think these guys are just guessing like any of us are. I don't know if they have inside, like real inside sources, people that are definitely telling them really, really good intel or not. But I'm starting to really pick up on the fact that it looks like these guys are just really throwing dog on paint at the wall, hoping it will spaghetti at the whatever you call it, throwing it at the wall, hoping it will stick, you know, so it being September, ah, it could possibly be that, or it might not happen at all. It's a good possibility we don't get anything outside of a state of play, even if we get that this year. But what I do believe is going to happen if they don't have any shows, nothing nothing of their own to really show off. I do believe that they will show up at Jeff Keighley's show and give him a couple of joints to really help ride them through this drought that they're having, you know, if they decide not to have a show. But we'll see what happens with this as well. I mean, look, September will be here before we know it. We're already about to be in June in the next few days. So we know that this month, uh, well, not even this month, but this year is almost halfway over. So September is not that far away. Um, But uh, yeah, I would definitely, again, take this story with a complete, mustard seed of truth now let's go ahead and let's get into some more xbox news and this is more of a positive note that i actually got from alt char that's the name of the site so obsidian's next game avowed has some very interesting things happening with its development now this is based on a report from jazz Corden. now jazz this guy is pretty darn good he's a good He's a pretty good source. You know, yeah, he doesn't get it right 100% of the time, but we do know that this guy does have some sources. So Jez Corden, who, uh, again, is reporting on this story, but he's reporting that Gears of War developer and masters, in my opinion, and, and many others of Unreal Engine are now helping Obsidian port Avowed to Unreal Engine 5.3, 
with the support of Xbox's internal advanced technology group. Now, they also mentioned that um, State of Decay 3 is also being developed in Unreal Engine 5 as well. So the coalition, they are the guys that are actually helping Obsidian get a vow up and running in Unreal Engine 5.3, which that sounds awesome, man. That sounds great. Anything in Unreal Engine 5, whatever, I am sold. So with them doing that and then this this other mention of State of Decay 3 being developed in Unreal Engine 5 as well, things are looking pretty bright. And then with the coalition actually allegedly supposed to have Gears of War 6 at the Xbox show, I mean, they could have some joints this year. They could really have some nice stuff to show off. Because even these three games alone, if these three hit, now, again, you guys remember, I told you Avowed, when I first saw it, I was like, "Eh, I don't really like the way that looks. But when I got back home and saw it, it looked great. So with them doing that and then topping that with uh, Unreal Engine 5.3 being the engine that they're using, yeah, this could be big. That and um, State of Decay 3, which I'm not even a fan of State of Decay, but... If this one comes off a lot better than the other two, then they may have me wanting to pick this one up as well. But only time will tell. Hopefully all three of these titles will be there. I mean, Gears of War 6 was not mentioned in this article, but I'm hoping that that will make an appearance at this uh, Xbox showcase. But we will see. But let's go ahead and let's get into the next story. And I got this from GameSpot. Now, it, it... I mean, now, it's not my type of game, but PS5 exclusive Concord, which is a multiplayer game, is apparently supposed to be shown off again with this 15 days. It's supposed to be shown off in 15 days, according to this GameSpot article. Now, that was written on May 20. Well, man, we already did the um, we did the math. That was on May 23rd. I wrote this down. Uh, and this report is actually coming again from Deal Labs, who also said the reveal will reportedly show off some playable characters in Concord as well as some new gameplay footage. So again, something about this 15 days. Again, I'm just thinking that they're trying to cover it where, okay, if the state of play happens, it'll happen within this 15 days. The showcase of that happens, it'll happen within 15 days. But if those don't pan out, Within that 15 day period, again, we got Jeff Keighley's show. Bam, I'm covered. Oh, I look like a genius. 15 uh, uh, day window. Oh, shucks, I did it again. Ah, you just projecting. It just seems like you projecting and guessing. Uh, You know, and uh, again, I'm hoping that this actually happens. I would, well, no, no, I'm not. Not for Concord. It's it's really not my type of game. (laughs) I don't want to sit up here and like, oh, yeah, I'm really, 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 really pumped up about this. No, 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 I'm not. But I know that some of you guys are actually into multiplayer. Some guys are looking forward to seeing more on Concord. So, again, within 15 days, according to, uh, let me get his name again, uh, Deal Labs. He spell, spells his name D-E-A-L-A-B-S. Uh, according to him. Within 15 days, we will see this game. We'll see, man. Uh, But let's get into the next story. And is this the final story? Yes, this is the final story of the week. Um, And this is a quick story. So according to Dusk Golem, and I actually got this article from Comic Book. So according to Dusk Golem, he says, quote, Oh, shucks. A remake of Resident Evil Zero and Code Veronica in development right now. End of quote. Oh, shucks. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Code name Veronica and Resident Evil Zero. Was Resident Evil Zero on the um GameCube, if I'm not mistaken? Was that it? Was that kind of like a twist on the first game? Kind of gave you a couple of added 
bonuses or features or did that star female protagonist? I can't quite remember, but man, oh shucks. I don't know, man. I'm just having like an epiphany. <laughs> this episode. I mean, I'm still going to report on the, um, the rumors and stuff. Cause to me, that's, that's the fun part of it. You know, trying to see if it's right or not, but man, I, I don't know. We heard that resident evil one was being remade and that made sense because that was going to be like falling in line with the 30 year anniversary of the, of the uh, franchise. Uh, so that made sense. And then we go from that to resident evil zero. And then we go from resident evil zero, not only being in development as a remake, but code name Veronica is also in development, um, as a remake. So again, I'm hoping that it's true. I really want it to be true. I'm just a little skeptical, man. I don't know. I mean, this would be dope if it happens. Do we get something at Jeff Keighley's show? Do we get something at Xbox's show? Uh, PlayStation, they still on the fritz, so we don't know what the world's going on with them. We know that none of these games can run on a Nintendo Switch, so that's out. You know, so all we really have to see any of this stuff on is Jeff Keighley's show. And, of course, they have on IGN, they got game interviews all day long, you know, where they'll be also premiering different games that may not have been on a stage, you know, so we have that to look forward to as well. But yeah, man, code Veronica, code name Veronica. I don't know, man, we will see. But anyway, that is the end of the gaming news this week, which brings us to video game uh, uh, theater. Now on this week's video game theater, we will be taking a look back at a PlayStation 4 classic. At least to me, it was a classic to me. We're going to be taking a look back at until dawn. And in this scene, we get into a tense this thing was tense, a tense chase scene with a bit of a twist. So stay tuned, guys, and we will be back after this week's video game theater to get into the final section of the podcast. Stay tuned, guys. Wait, okay, so you can hear that too, right? Josh. What? Like weirdly regular. Not, not, nothing regular about it. Maybe we should go check it out. Why? What if it's like a a pipe that's about to burst or some problem with the furnace? Unlikely. If it were me, I wouldn't want this place to burn down in my watch. Yeah. Right. down here what was i was i not supposed to take advantage of the opportunity are you are you serious were you in on this putz <laughs> no but I, I wish i was that was too good ladies and gentlemen until dawn god dog oh that scene got me man <laughs> Man, I was fumbling with the controller. I was trying to get it together. Golly, 
That game was so doggone good, man. If you have not checked it out, it holds up very, very well to this day. It holds up extremely well. I don't know why they needed a remake or they're coming out with a remake for that. I don't know why, but that game was really, really well done. Um, also, just on a side note, though, before we get into the final section of the podcast, it was a story that was being reported that the next um, Horizon for, well, Horizon game is actually going to be a prequel. So we got that to look forward to. We'll see if it's true or not, but those are some of the reports that are out there right now. So, but anyway, let's go ahead now and let's get into the final section of the podcast. And you guys already know, I asked you guys a question. I know you guys saw the question early on in the episode, but let's go over it officially. So the question this week is, why aren't more people on current gen? And I will tell you why. Because they are not giving them an incentive to do so. These companies, well, not companies, but some of these um, console manufacturers will say they're not making the money, they're complaining, we're not hitting those those numbers that we're trying to get. You got to give people incentive to move over to your console. We're not selling as many consoles as we would like. You got to give people an incentive. As long, this is the thing. As long as you are offering something for free, a lot of the time, unless you give them give somebody an incentive and it's something that they like, they're gonna not pay you. They're not going to pay you unless you give them a reason to. And this is business. These are, these are not, well, yeah, people make up the business, but you know, this isn't you dealing with a person specifically. These are consoles. They're entertainment devices at the end of the day. So if they can continue to get that same entertainment that they've been getting, and they don't have to upgrade, they don't have to spend the money to do so, then they are going to stay where they are. Us, the hardcore, we are such a small demographic. Yes, we're we're a powerful demographic because, and the reason why I say that is because we get the word out, we talk to people, we tell people, well, this is a dope game, stay away from that one. Yeah, that's got some microtransactions in it. We can kind of steer people, you know, in a in a, well according to how we feel, you know, in in a certain direction that kind of aligns with us or even just help them out to let them know, nah, you want to stay away from that. Well, you know, whatever the case may be, but we do have a voice. We have a big voice, you know, when it comes down to it, um, because without the hardcore, you don't get, you know, um, people talking about the consoles, people being passionate about why you should get this console or get this game or things of that nature, you know, but, We are a small group, no doubt about it. So when it comes to upgrading, some people, yeah, if you don't give them an incentive to do so, they're not going to do it. These consoles are not cheap. They're not going down in price. The PlayStation 5 went up in during price. What the world? Oh, I was so hot about that because that happened during the time when I was trying to get one. I'm like, man, this is some bull crap. You went from 500 to 550, Sony. This is ridiculous. You know, but I, I still got my money, though. God darn it. But I did get God of War as a pack-in. So that, that was a that was a pretty good deal because I was going to buy that anyway and I actually end up saving 20 bucks. So that, that was actually a good deal, but not everybody is going to look at it that way. They're going to be like, no, I don't need to spend that money. The next call of duty is coming out and it's available on the console that I have on the PlayStation four on the Xbox one. That's fine. I'll pick it up. The next two K is going to be on there as well. Fine. I'll get that. Madden is going to be on there. No problem. That's where I'm staying. I have no reason to go anywhere else. I'm at home. You know, so that's, in my opinion, why, you know, these next gen, well, the current gen, current gen consoles aren't selling as much. I mean, I would love to get you guys opinion on this to to hear where you guys, you know, where y'all think the um the problem may lie. I mean, $70, that ain't, that ain't cool either. God darn, that's a lot of doggone money. 
uh, to continue to pick up games that are still broken on day one. Uh, not giving you a lot of extra. I mean, don't get me wrong. Graphically, these games do look so doggone good, man. Having ray tracing in some of them, how, you know, as limited as it may be, you know, but some games running at 60 frames per second. There's some upgrades there, but it, it can definitely be an argument on whether or not the games are worth $70, you know, due to some of these features. But anyway, I'm going on a rant. I want to get you guys out of here. I'm already 10 minutes late. I would love to hear from you guys about this uh, this um, topic. Again, the question is, why aren't more people on current gen? If you want to be a part of the conversation, again, you can do it two different ways. You can either call in at 443 443- Three eight zero zero two eight one, and let your voice be heard. Or you can email the show, and the email address is the Analog Circle Podcast at gmail dot com. I was your host, Keon Mitchell, and as always, I want to say thank you for being here. Really appreciate y'all. So with that being said, you know, like I said, the the listener feedback will not be Wednesday. I'm going to have to figure that out. And Cody Clark, again, shout out to you, good brother. I got you, man. But until the next episode, when we do it again, until then, always remember one thing. It is not about the consoles. It is about the games. God, dog, phone going off. So until Maybe this weekend and maybe Sunday. I might have to cover you on Sunday, Cody, when I get the podcast back on track. But until then, you guys take care. Be safe out there. Bye-bye.